What is going on guys? This is Alejandro, I am RMA and today I want to teach you how to create very very badass looking liquid simulations in Houdini with any kind of object that you want to have to it stick. Um, we're going to be splitting up this tutorial in three different sections because it is relatively long. The first one, it's very cool though it does kind of cover a lot of things that I've already thought in previous tutorials with mixing liquids. I'm gonna go overview of how you can do it and set this up for the second part where we're going to be creating like pieces isolated so that we can stick different chips, whatever kind of object you wanna flow with the liquid. For example, a water simulation that you want bubbles or honey simulation that you want things in the inside has very, very, very different uses, such as chocolate having chips on its stock. And in the third part of the tutorial, we're gonna cover very short, but very effective techniques to simulate this on a plane, but bending it so that in production, you can solve interesting tips, like for example, you got a cone, and you want this thing to wrap around the cone, or twist around the cone using the base simulation that we're going to learn how to create on tutorial number one. All right, guys, so inside of Houdini, let's check out what we're going to do. We have in the setup a few things. These are our render nodes. So I'm going to go ahead and just color them for you guys to like be wary of what we have. Let's make them green so that we know we're going to render those. We have a few cameras in the scene that you guys can play with, already set up, and my environments and lights. <clears throat> my environments and lights, very simple, just an HDRI. Um, you guys have this same HDRI that I use on pretty much all my tutorials. I love this HDR from Grayscale Gorilla. And two um, RS lights that if we visualize them, it's just two lights like that. But you know for that, this isn't really a rendering tutorial. We're gonna look into like the actual simulation. So if we go inside of our base simulation, here's how it's set up. We have a curve. So let's make this invisible. So I'm just drawing a curve. Um, if we were to just type draw curve and we set this projection to ZX, you can hit enter on the viewport and just like draw whatever you want, right? And then you can do a few different things here like this. And this is going to give you your initial curves. And this curves are our base that emits the liquid. So once we come here, you will notice that I drew a few curves and then I added a transform to extend it just to make it a little longer. And this is my base emission. Then I'm resampling it because I want my points to be ordered a little bit differently. So if we look at this here, it's very, the points are ordered like in a very like chaotic way. Like this, I'm resampling it. And then I'm adding one more resample with a bit more, um, more points. So in the length, if you reduce the amount, you get more points. And if you increase it, you get less points. We want something like this. Then I'm adding a mountain. And the reason for the mountain is because I want to have a little bit of noise in there. So you can control here the size of your noise and the offset and all those things. Then I'm scattering points onto that. Um, and if we play, you will see that the points are jumping all away, all around. And that's fine because I want to have like a moving sort of um, emission. And if you look at the global seed, I have dollar FF plus 55. 55 is the seed. It can be any number you want. But I'm just like kind of like randomizing every single frame so that the emission points are moving. Then we're creating VDV from particles and the VDV from particles, you will see that this is connected to the flip. We'll look at that in a second. And I'm changing the point scale radius of the points so that 
it really just like fills it up like if we change this point scale radius to like 0.8 or something is gonna fill it up more and you're gonna have more liquid um, this is a decent number that I liked on my flip source we have a voxel scale that is relatively high um, and we also have a, a dollar f jitter scale uh, jitter seed here so that they're like jumping around um, and this is all about like tricks to like make the emission um, more dynamic before we look into like those simple yet super effective tricks that I'm doing here let's just briefly touch into my collision source so for the collision we also have like a simple drawn um, surface here that with the ends I'm connecting it so that it's just a plane then I'm creating an extrude so that we have like a source like this then I'm transforming it so that it's like um, the moving centroid is in the center of this so that we have like a clean source for an extruded really ugly thing like this but don't worry I'm blasting whatever is not like um, working and basically what I did is you select after your extrusion I'm selecting this like point in here and I'm just like hitting delete and that just blasts it so nothing fancy it's just a way of creating a source like this my container then I'm transforming it again then I'm putting down a grid extruding the grid so that we have like um, good volume grid right here I'm turning that into VDV let me refresh by control T space F to center everything and I'm just gonna hide everything but what we have right here I'm fusing it and then I'm converting it to a polygon right and then I am caching this so that we have our collision source cached this is being input onto my second input here and you'll see it being referenced inside of DOPS into inside our flip simulation as our collision source. Now, let's look into what I'm doing here with this drag attribute. This is something that I've already covered on other liquid tutorials, but let's briefly touch on it right here so that you guys have an idea of what's happening. Inside of the drag, we have a turbulence, a fit range, and an attribute that we're exporting. And I'm connecting this to the CD so that I can visualize it. If we create this from scratch, we're doing an attribute VOP. Let's go inside of our VOP. Let's drop down the turbulence. Connect this position here and into our CD. And that's just gonna give us a random color. And I'm gonna increase the amplitude and see come out here for a second let's increase the frequency I'm just refreshing so that my viewport works as it should and this Basically what this is doing is just randomizing a noise onto the points. It's, it's hard to see it like this, but let's see if it, it's easier to see it on the points up here. You can see it here. That's what it's doing. It's essentially creating a noise and I'm just randomizing that noise here. If you, if you hit it, hit here and you do create input parameters, You'll be able to control this outside so right here so you can control this here the amplitude the roughness um, and then we're doing a bind export and exporting the drag attribute you can call this anything that you want 
we just want to output these values and we want to do a fit range so that we can control and normalize it between a zero and one value or a higher value. We'll be playing with that shortly. So if we hit the hit here, you will see that my minimum range is one and it goes all the way up to 222. Um, so basically that attribute allows the black and the white to control different amounts of drag fitted between these two values. And then I'm doing a dollar F times zero one so that the, the noise is moving constantly throughout the entire um, simulation. You can see it churning right there. So essentially in summary, when we hit play, what that's gonna do is that it's gonna emit different drags as the simulation goes and that's how we're going to be make we mix that that liquid um, the point velocity um, is what's going to enable a little bit of curl noise and a little bit of scale here on our so you want to do point point velocity keep incoming and add a little bit of curl noise so that our velocity is randomized from the from the get-go then I'm doing an attribute adjust float and I'm set, setting that to my viscosity and I'm saying I want this value to range between 0 and 44 and I'm adding a noise and I am also animating it. This is doing the same thing as my drag but it's automatically doing that to my viscosity. So the viscosity is being animated and we're also adding drag so it's like a lot of things that really break up your simulation. So you can come in here and you can do operations like a noise pattern. You can select the minimum and max range, which is basically the same thing that we have here um, on the fit range. You can play with the ramps and you can change the noise here on the noise pattern. And also if you hit here, make sure that that's animated. Then I'm doing a transform so that I can place my source on a decent place when I look at it based on my collisions. So you will notice that now we have that noise, we have the collision source placed in a decent place, and I'm happy with it. I'm happy with the way that this part is set up. Now let's, if you drop down a dot net and connect this like the way that I have it right here, first input my source, second input my collision, Let's go in there and see what's happening. So the first thing that you want to drop down is a flip object. On the flip object, we're going to do the particle separation. And you can see that if we right click and you copy this parameter, and then we paste the relative reference of that parameter here on my flip source, actually on my scatter. Um, sorry, on my voxel size here of my VDB from particles. What that's gonna do is every time that I change this parameter here is automatically going to update it out here. Um, this is helpful because I don't have to be going back and forth. Um, and additionally to that, if you notice my point separation is divided by two. So whatever value I put here, it divides it by two and it automatically updates it outside of DOPS. Um, and that's going to control my particle separation. So the higher this number goes, the more resolution we're gonna get on our sim. Let's go ahead and drop this down to 0.01 for the tutorial so that this plays a little faster. And that is our source for the flip object. On the guides, you wanna set this to particles. Um, and that's basically that's our source that's not really doing anything else so stay tuned and i will be back with more